This video is sponsored by Blinkist. In Asia, dry lands cover approximately half of the continent, with China being the most affected by aridity, with approximately 6.6 .6 million kilometers square of dry lands that support a whopping 580 million people. These dry lands are also affected by desertification, which is the process by which land turns into desert. This in turn has increased the number of dust storms across the world's dry lands, particularly in China. These dust storms can cause havoc to neighboring cities and cause accidents, threatening human lives and economic output. And since China has many deserts, covering almost 27% of the country's land area, much of the continent is at risk. However, a miracle is taking place in one of China's deserts, called the Babusha Desert. This man-made desert was entirely barren 40 years ago. Amazingly, it has now totally been transformed. This incredible effort covers an area of 2,800 hectares, with over 40 million trees planted across the desert. A further 7,000 hectares of farmland have been protected, and it would not have been possible if it wasn't for the heroic work of a group of ordinary farmers known affectionately as the Six Old Men. These men spent 38 years of their life regreening the desert. This transformation was no easy feat due to tough weather conditions. In the first year of hard work, 70% of the saplings got buried by moving dunes. After more trial and error, the Six Men found a smart way to keep the trees alive. In this video, we will show you how the Six Old Men managed to turn the desert back into a farmland oasis. Located on the southern edge of the vast Tenja Desert in Gulen County, the Babusha Forest Farm in its surrounding area was once plagued by severe sandstorms. In Chinese, Babusha means sand in eight steps. It is derived from a local saying describing the area's harsh climate. The saying goes, the sand is only eight steps away from one's doorstep. Because of the rapid rate of desertification in the area, many of the villagers had moved away in the 1960s, so simply preventing homes from being swallowed up by the desert was the original mission of the six old men. It began in 1981 when six fellow farmers decided to hold back the invading desert. They pressed their thumbprints into a desertification control contract, establishing the Babusha Forest Farm. From that day forward, the six farmers vowed to green the sandy area. Even if the goal would take generations to materialize, they started planting trees together ever since. The last of the first generation of farmers to be known as the six old men is Zhang Runyang. He said at the initial stage of sand control and afforestation, we had no shelter. One time we were hit by a sandstorm and one of our fellow villagers got buried. When we found him, he said he really wanted to give up as he nearly died at the age of 50. But they didn't give up because the sand dunes would creep towards their village at a speed of 7 to 8 meters per year, consuming fields and crops. At that time, the oldest of the six men was 62 and the youngest was 40. They started afforestation efforts with the most basic equipment available, a cart and several shovels. Growing trees in the desert was much more difficult than they had originally thought. In the beginning, they planted trees according to traditional methods of irrigating a sapling with a scoop of water. Zhang recalled, the desert was completely barren back then, without any grass to protect the new planted saplings. In the first year, they had planted 670 hectares of saplings, and a whopping 60-70% to 70 of them were blown away by sandstorms the next spring. However, an unexpected discovery kindled hope into the hearts of the six men. They found that saplings grew better in places where weeds had survived sandstorms. Excited by this realization, the six regained confidence. They started planting grass in grids to stop the sand and they were determined that a sapling planted with some grass had a better chance of surviving sandstorms. In the end, the hardest thing wasn't planting the trees, but nurturing them. 
Grazing cattle from nearby villages often ate the new planted saplings, so the six men started taking turns guarding the saplings during grazing times. They stayed awake long past midnight. Eventually, the work was starting to pay off, an oasis of trees, bushes and grasses took shape in the babusha. The local forestry bureau liked what they saw and decided to offer support, which enabled them to build three small houses in the desert. With most work to be done in autumn, they mobilized their families to help. More than 40 people, some as young as teenagers, from the six families were organized to combat desertification. With all this extra help, by the turn of the century, their shovels and hands would plant more than 10 million trees across 50 square kilometers of desert. But the six old men were aging, so they made a pact that all their families would carry on the arduous task of pushing back the desert. From the early 1990s, sons and sons-in-laws from the six families took up their father's spades one by one, and the second generation band of the six brothers was formed. But a second generation farmer called Guo Wangang was reluctant when his father passed the responsibility to him. Guo recalls, I had mixed feelings. I was 31 years old and had a good job working for the government. But a catastrophic sandstorm was what changed Guo's mind. On the afternoon of May 5, 1993, just as children were leaving school, a severe sandstorm struck Gulan County and devoured everything into darkness. Guo was then patrolling the desert and sheltered himself in a pit. The wind was so strong that he could just blow a person into the air and I couldn't see anything, he recalled. From that point on, Guo became steadfast and committed his efforts in combating desertification in Babusha. However, new challenges emerged. In 1993, the state adjusted its ecological policies such that the Babusha forest farm could no longer receive government allowance for afforestation. Quick-thinking Guo proposed they promote the development of forestry with agriculture. This meant the forest farm brought 20 hectares of nearby wasteland and dug a well to transform the land into farmland to improve the living conditions of Babusha. Now the third generation of the six old men are actually not so old. Guo Chi, the grandson of the Guo family, is 34 and he is a motor mechanic and he is good at operating machines. He uses machines that can dig and plant and he has introduced other mechanized equipment on the Babushta forest farm. In the old days, he said, my grandpa planted 0.67 hectares per day. With a tree planting machine, I can plant around 3.3 to 4 hectares a day which is 50 to 60 times faster than manual labor. Now nearly after four decades, the environment in Gulan County has improved. The desert winds are fewer and less fierce, and the annual rainfall has increased from 100 millimeters in the 1980s to 300 millimeters this year. What makes the generations of green warriors so proud is that those who fled Babushra in the 1960s are now moving back. Today there are 24 more households. By adopting new innovations of mechanization and farming in the desert, they have helped to control diversification, created jobs and incomes. They are renting land from poor farmers in nearby communities and by planting drought-resistant cash crops, including medicinal herbs and dates, they can make decent profits. Some of these precious herbs are grafted on the suso and satchel, the type of tree they have been planting in the desert. The farm is now creating jobs for impoverished people in the local neighborhoods, and the community residents are hired as farmland hands during busy seasons. Guru says that they plan to purchase drones to patrol the forests and introduce more professionals. He says by promoting poverty alleviation through developing desert industries, we're leading desert dwellers towards prosperous lives. And even after 40 years, it shows that the forest farm has never stopped its fight against desertification, even after overcoming economic difficulties. The second and third generation of green warriors have continued to conquer another three major sandstorms and pushing back the desert, turning it green once again, bringing prosperity to their communities 
and improving the biodiversity around them. This inspiring story just goes to show that you don't need a Batmobile or Kryptonite to be a superhero. The Everyday Hero Manifesto by Robin Sharma, which is available on Blinkist, teaches that we all have the capacity to become our own heroes. By following the steps in the manifesto, you can unlock skills and make simple shifts in life which can reap enormous rewards. Just like the six old men, it's never too late in life to become more productive, happier and more fulfilled versions of ourselves. This year, for 2023, I want to become my own hero and using Blinkist is helping me get there. Blinkist gives you quick access to the most important advice and information from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts. 15 minutes is all it takes to get powerful insights from 27 different topics. Being educated and entertained at the same time is why I like Blinkist over any other product. You can also share your collections with one friend or family member with Blinkist Connect. You can send an invite and once accepted, they will get full access to Blinkist with their own separate account. This means you get two for the price of one. So don't miss out. Get 25% off Blinkist Premium and enjoy two memberships for the price of one. Start your seven-day free trial today by clicking the link in the pinned comment and the description. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video.